Welcome to the Unapologetic Man Podcast. The only podcast that's all about self-improvement, confidence, success, women, and being a man without making any apologies for it. What is up, gentlemen? Thank you for tuning in to another episode of the UMP. And today, we are going to talk about why women cheat and how to prevent it moving forward. I don't know about you, but I've been cheated on before and it fucking sucks. You know what happened to me is I was in college, didn't know what the hell I was doing with women, treated this girl like absolute gold. I was so in love with her. She was my first love. Her name was Krista. I was completely sprung on this chick. And then I went to her dorm, true fucking story, brother, and it just crushes my heart every time I think about it. And I heard her having sex in her dorm room with another guy. She had one of those single dorm rooms. She didn't have a roommate, so I knew it was her. And of course, I could hear her voice and his voice, how much I wanted to kill that guy. Bro, my fucking knees went out. I collapsed on the floor. I literally crawled out to my car, drove home. I drove home like 10 miles per hour on the freeway, people beeping at me and going by. And it was insane. Got home and literally cried on the corner of my bed in the cannonball position for two fucking weeks like a schoolgirl. And it was that incident that convinced me to figure this shit out once and for all. Why? Because I treated her like gold. I was the best boyfriend a girl could ever want. I was the nice guy. I was the supplicator. I did her favors. I complimented her. I was basically giving her what I thought she wanted, which a lot of us guys think that women want. We try to be the nice guy. We try to do right by them. And then they fucking stab us in the back. And a lot of you listening right now are nodding your head because you've had this shit happen to you. So what I want to go over today is why this happens and how to prevent it moving forward. I'll tell you what, ever since I got this shit figured out, and I'll tell you, that was a massive, massive motivator to get this shit figured out. It sent me on a two plus decade long journey to become the best girl magnet I possibly could be and then teach others how to do the same thing. But man, when I think back to what I did, I didn't know any better. And when I think about why it is that she cheated on me, honestly, it was a lot my fault. It was a lot my fault now. If somebody cheats on you, it's fucked up. They shouldn't do that. They should just break up with you first and then go sleep with the person. As I've done to so many girls, it's unexplainable. But it was fucked up what she did. You know, we were like 21, 22. So what do you expect from somebody so young? But still, it was mostly my fault, man. And I take responsibility for it. I pushed her away in so many ways. I'm going to try to explain to you guys. Obviously, this can't be a comprehensive analysis as to why women cheat and how to prevent it moving forward because my entire podcast is a comprehensive analysis. But I'm going to give you the 10,000 foot perspective, go over the points what most guys do wrong when it comes to this and how, again, to completely prevent this shit moving forward. Hasn't happened to me since. And it will never fucking happen to me. It never will because I understand how to be in a relationship with the woman. I understand how to lead the relationship to where she stays attracted to me. And we're going to go over all that today. Gentlemen, before I jump into the content, want to give a quick shout out to people who applied and who weren't accepted into the program. Now, I've been getting a lot of emails here and there over the past few weeks where people are like, hey, Mark. Love your show, applied a few months ago, wasn't accepted, X, Y, Z, too bad. You know, I'm still listening, still love what you're putting out there. And I did a little research on these guys and I noticed that I sent them the email, they just didn't reply. So from my perspective, they're the ones who blew me out. And it's like, I don't get butthurt about that shit because honestly, I have more applicants than spots available in my program. But what I think happens is this, is I think sometimes the guys apply And my emails go into their spam, promotions, or social folder, and they don't check for it. And I literally talk about it. After you apply, there's a video of me saying, hey, thanks for applying. Check your spam folder. Because God knows email clients like Gmail, Hotmail, and the like love to fucking put my shit into spam. So what I think happened to a lot of you guys, if you didn't hear back from me, because you will always hear back from me, 100%. So if I send you an email and you reply to it, and you don't make the cut for whatever reason, I will let you know. I'm going to give you a bunch of programs. I'm going to tell you you're a fucking champion. I'm going to give you way more than what I asked for in return, a bunch of gifts. And if you don't hear from me, I guarantee you, you did hear from me. You just didn't see the email. So once again, if you apply or you had applied in the past, those who think they never heard from me, you can go ahead and apply again. And again, check your fucking spam folder. 
And for those of you who will apply, remember, man, spam, promotions, all those folders. And if you haven't heard from me within 24 hours, I guarantee I got your application. I guarantee we emailed you. You're just not seeing it or your email completely blocked it, whatever it was reach out to us again and I will get in contact with you. I never just not contact somebody. Every single guy who applies, I don't care who it is, gets contacted. So I wanted to throw that out there. And again, if you think that I never replied to you, either message me letting me know or just apply again and then look out for your spam folder. All right, with that out of the way, let's talk about why women cheat. The biggest reason women cheat is because you lose the frame in the relationship. And my clients and longtime podcast listeners all know this. They're probably all smiling right now because they're like, aha, I knew this jackass was going to say this. And why am I saying it, you fucking sea donkey? It's because it's true. God damn it, it's true. If you let her have the frame, which means if you let her lead the relationship, she is going to lose attraction for you and seek that in somebody else. To both men and women, being attracted to the opposite party is extremely fucking important. Women are attracted to a man who leads, who's in his masculine energy, who's ambitious, confident, a go-getter, and shows her he is not to be fucked with. As I always talk about in my podcast, guys are attracted to a girl who stays in her feminine energy, stays as hot as she possibly can, sucks a mean dick, gives him some of the best sex he's ever had, and supports him and loves him and nurtures him. So those are the two keys to keeping somebody attracted to you. Of course, this is a podcast for dudes, so we're going to focus on you guys. The most important thing is maintaining the frame. That means leading the interaction, leading the relationship, being the final decision maker. Now, of course, this opens up a whole Pandora's box of issues where she may not let you be the decision maker. And brother, it's your fault if you get into a relationship with a girl who constantly struggles to have the frame from you, which basically means constantly struggles to have the power. You as the man need to be in the power position. I stand by it. I don't care how many fucking emails I get. In order for a woman to maintain attraction for you, you have to be in the power position. Now, some chicks may email me and say, you're a fucking misogynist. It's not about that. I'm not a misogynist. I'm saying the man needs to be the leader. Why? The man is masculine and masculinity leads. Femininity follows. I'm not saying that femininity is worse. I'm not saying that it's second tier to masculinity. If you and I were to get together and talk, I would tell you for hours all the ways in which I think femininity is superior to masculinity. But in this context, masculinity has to lead. Now that begs the question, how does it lead? First of all, as I always talk about, and I just dropped an episode on this, if you haven't heard it, I strongly suggest it, NTBFW, not to be fucked with. You have to show her that you have boundaries. You have to show her you're not to be fucked with. You can't agree with her opinion just to get into rapport with her. You have to have your own sense of reality and be ensconced in who you really are and what you believe is right for you. So when you're ensconced in who you are, you naturally take a leadership position. Second point is you have to want less than she wants. This goes into the all-important rule of 80-100 rule. You have to make yourself, if you have to, want 80% of what she wants. Now, as I always say too, mostly to my clients who are getting more ass than a toilet seat and they don't know what to do with all these chicks, I say you need to fall into a relationship where you guys just naturally do the 8100 rule. She wants about 20% more than you want. She wants to hang out more. She wants to bond more. Usually she wants to have a bit more sex and you leave her just wanting a little bit more. But at the same time, when she's with you, it's like a sanctuary. She has an amazing time with you. You tuck her under your wing and show her an amazing life. You protect her. And for many women, they'll say, I don't need protection. That's fine. That's fine. You don't need protection, but I have the ability to protect you. Why? Because I'm a blue belt in that Brazilian jiu-jitsu. That's why, motherfuckers. You have to protect these chicks. Preside over them. Provide for them if that's what you've decided that your relationship dictates. So as you're leading the relationship, she's staying highly, highly attracted to you. Also, you have to be in your masculine energy. Women are attracted to masculinity. Duh, how obvious is that? Yet so many guys, bro, and a lot of you guys can relate. I'm not saying you're this guy, but you've seen this guy, are fucking pussies in today's day and age. God damn fucking pussies. It makes me do the old three forehead slaps when I see the pussification of the American male. 
It is absolutely unbelievable what feminine pussies these dudes are becoming. And they wonder why they can't get girls to stay with them. Hmm, I wonder why. Because you're a fucking pussy. Harden the fuck up, step into your masculinity, embrace your testosterone, and do whatever's necessary to make yourself a fucking man, which I talk about on this podcast all the goddamn time. Women are attracted to that masculine man who, and I'm just thinking of examples off the top of my head, between me and my girl, right? Something goes wrong. I got it, sweetie. You stay in here. I'm going to go check it out. She walks past me, smack her ass a little bit. When I embrace her and kiss her, I look down on her with my head straight and my eyes just looking down on her for a few seconds until she goes into her feminine and then I kiss her really passionately. I don't complain or bitch or cry to my woman, boys. And no matter how close you are to your woman, you should always have somebody else who you coach with. I have several mentors that I work with who I bitch to, I tell my fears to. As far as Marissa is concerned, and Marissa is my woman's name, I am the goddamn rock of Gibraltar unmoved, unfazed, I got this. And she's the waves of the ocean slapping up against my rock. And I'm like, it's all right, I got you. Your emotions are not affecting me. And I'm not gonna go cry to you because I understand that my tears will not work as lubricant for sex. You know what gets her wet? When you're fucking in your masculine energy, when you are imperturbable, which means unaffected by your emotions, when you give her slightly less of you, of what you want, and the fourth thing is you're ambitious. You have your own life. You have your own desires, your own passions. So fucking important, boys. One of the biggest mistakes I made with Krista, that chick who cheated on me in college, is I made her my number one priority. The worst, the worst thing you could do. I can't even explain to you how bad that is when you make a woman your number one priority. It turns them off. You're trying to get the snail trail going down your leg when she's dancing on you in the nightclub, but all you're getting is the goddamn Sahara Desert. This cannot turn women off more than a shit-crusted dildo she found in the trash can, and you say you got to use that thing on yourself. This turns them off more, and women listening are probably laughing right now. Guys who are unambitious, who cry to her, who make her their number one priority— who do her favors all the time, and I'll get to that one in a second, who are basically putting the pussy on a pedestal, as it said in that movie, The 40-Year-Old Virgin. Do not put the pussy on a pedestal. Have your life as number one. Your passions, your career, brother, your purpose. If you can make your purpose number one, and she understands that she is number two to your purpose and your desires and your passions, she's gonna maintain attraction for you. Why? It communicates survivability. When you're passionate, when you're driven, when you're ambitious, this turns women on like a goddamn faucet because it shows that you can survive in society. You're probably going to be successful. You're probably going to make a lot of money. And when I say money, I'm not saying that women are attracted to money because of money. I'm saying women are attracted to the signal of having money, that it signifies you're ambitious, a go-getter, a hard worker. You have perseverance. You never fucking quit. So when a guy has money, yeah, he might be ambitious, but she has to check you first for your personality, your tonality, your frame, etc. This is why some guys with money don't get chicks. But money, again, is a signal that you're ambitious. And why does she want money, let's say? Not for the money necessarily. Now, of course, gold diggers are a separate topic. She doesn't necessarily want the money. She wants your genes to pass on to her children. When it comes to attraction, it's all about the kids. And I know that sounds completely ridiculous because for those of you who have kids, nothing kills a sexual experience like fucking kids in the house. You got a plan having sex. You both look like Chicken McNuggets with tits because you're trying to take care of this kid and you're not exercising enough. It's horrible for your sex life. But what I mean is sexuality is based on her ability to have kids. That's why we're attracted to women. It's all health signs of her ability to have kids. And her attraction for you is your ability to pass on genes to make those kids successful. So now we see nice guys, right? They do her favors. They supplicate to her. What's that communicate? That she's the one in power. And she's thinking, if I'm the one leading this relationship, then what's society going to do to this guy? Does it communicate strong genes that he's kissing my ass, doing me favors, blowing smoke up my butt and trying to tell me I'm the most wonderful woman ever and for him to please have sex with me and use his tears as lubricant for that sex? Do you think that's going to turn a woman on? Fuck no. She's going to go cheat on you. 
if you're not masculine, if you're more feminine than she is and make her take the feminine role, like you guys are camping and you hear something go bump in the night and you're like, can you go check that out, please? Dude, you're not getting laid for months, bro. And she's probably going to go cheat on the dude who is strong enough to get up and go check that shit. Tell you what, boys, when we go camping, I bring my Sig Sauer P226, something goes bump in the night, I'm fucking clearing that entire forest. Pine Tree 1, clear. Aspen Grove, clear. Big Thompson River, clear for one kilometer. I'm clearing the whole fucking thing the whole night so that my girl will be safe. And that's what a man does. He protects his woman. And that's why I strongly suggest you guys fucking train. What is the superior martial art? Obviously, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. 95% of fights go to the ground. Once you get on the ground, I'll tell you what, it's like throwing a tiger into a shark tank. I'm the shark, he's the tiger. I don't care how much stand-up game he has. The second I double leg that guy to the ground, he's getting choked the fuck out because it's like throwing a tiger into a shark tank. I strongly suggest all you guys do that. So the reason she goes and sleeps with another guy is because she's subconsciously looking for his genes to pass on to her. How many of you guys been cheated on? Do you see why it happened? Okay, you lost power in the relationship. You didn't show a lot of ambition. Maybe you let yourself go. You supplicated to her. Or worse yet, you let her bad behavior stand. She's like, I want to go to XYZ restaurant. And you're like, sweetheart, we had plans to go to this restaurant. She's like, no, I want this restaurant. And you're like, okay. And why did you say, okay? Because you didn't want to piss her off. You didn't want to deal with the fucking drama. Women have so much more energy than we do to create drama where we're just like, fuck it. You can have your way. Just shut the hell up. For those of you guys who have kids, remind you of anything? And what happens when you let a kid have their way? Damn right, man. Give an inch, they take a mile. It's the same thing with chicks. You guys have to sack up, especially in the first two weeks to a month of a relationship, and show these girls that you have boundaries and you are not going to move them because of her complaining and bad attitude. If a chick complains, has a bad attitude, I'm punishing that behavior by dropping her off, by texting her less, by rewarding and or punishing the behavior that I wish to produce. Guys, it takes energy to deal with these chicks, okay? I'm not saying it's easy. It takes a butt ton of energy to get good with girls, to deal with them, to find the woman of your dreams and make sure that you guys have the right dynamic so that she doesn't cheat on you. If you let that go and you become lazy, as so many of us do, she's going to go look for it in some other guy. Another big issue that guys do, and my women listening, I know especially my female friends who listen to my podcast are going to be laughing, when guys don't listen to the woman, when they're not there for the woman, it seems like they're invisible to the relationship. Like you're standing there looking straight and she's waving her hand in front of your eyes and she's like, hello, where the fuck are you? You got to be present in the relationship. Listen to her. Be there for her. Comfort her. Be that fucking rock of Gibraltar where her waves of emotions, which make no mistake, boys, women have a lot of emotions, can slap up against you and you are imperturbable. Listen to my podcast called The T and C Rule. This stands for Trust and Connection. Just search Mark Singh T and C Rule and that talks all about it. So it's this mixture of being that strong rock for her leading the interaction, protecting her, being unaffected by her emotional outbursts, being ambitious, putting your life as number one, only giving her about 80% of what she wants from you. But when she's ready to talk and they call them Venus talks, when she's ready to let go and talk to you, you're right there listening to her, not trying to solve her problems, boys. And this is a big one, not trying to solve her problems. Just listen. You don't have to say anything. Just wrinkle your eyebrows, stare at her mouth, and you're going to come out the other side being this big sweetheart. And they're going to be like, all right, sweetie, come here. Give me a hug. And you're going to grab her, hug her tight, kiss her like a fucking man, smack her ass, and go work on your car. Go do what you want to do. She going to cheat on you? Hell no, dude. You're going to be working on the car with a socket wrench leaning over it, and suddenly your pants are going to go, and she's going to be sucking your dick, and you're like, baby, relax, not now, okay? And she's like, I don't know, I'm just so turned on by you when you do all the things that you do, which is not kissing her ass, not giving her the frame, being ambitious, being highly into your masculine energy, listening to her. And finally, boys, my final point, never under any circumstance being jealous, showing jealousy, trying to control her horrible. It's so funny because we try to control these chicks and then what happens? It just makes them go do it faster, right? When you're like, hey, text me when you get back. Oh, you're going out to that nightclub tonight. Oh, you're hanging out with that guy. The more you do that shit, the more it's going to chase her into that dude's arms. 
So the way you have to think about it is if you cheat on me, you're a fucking idiot and it's your loss. That's literally the way I think. And if you cheat on me, I will be out the door so fast. The door slamming is going to blow the condom out of your ass when the concussion hits. That's how fast you'll blow this chick out. You will fucking drop her at the flip of a switch if she fucks up and she knows that. You have your boundaries. You are your own man. And listen, you're okay without her because your life is so fucking gangster. Sure, you want her. You prefer to have her, but you're okay without her because you don't need her. There's no neediness involved. You're an alpha, silverback, unapologetic man. And what you say is the best thing for you is what goes. And if she doesn't like it, kick rocks with your head down. Don't let the door hit you where the good Lord split you, you fucking sea bass. Beat it because I ain't dealing with it. And that's the balance, boys. And this is how to prevent girls from cheating on you. You got to get that frame right in the beginning. Now, obviously, I dropped a lot of information on your head. Your head may be spinning if you've never heard my stuff before. Here's what I suggest. Go listen to that episode, The TNC Rule. Listen to any episode about frame control. Listen to my episode about not to be fucked with, why you shouldn't change your opinion for a woman, and the barometer technique, all of which I dropped within the last month. Those will get you started. If instead you'd love for me to curate everything and deliver it to you in the easiest way possible over a three-month period, drip-fed to you so your subconscious mind can remember everything and become that unattractive man, apply to my coaching program. Go to my website, coachmarksing.com, click on coaching, fill in the quick application, send it in. And as a reminder, gentlemen, I email every single guy who applies. So if you applied and I didn't email you, that's your bad because you weren't checking your promotions, social, and spam folders. If you check all those, like you're like, oh shit, I applied back in January. Let me check all my folders and they're not there. Then email me and let me know and you can have another crack at it. Yeah, I'm a cutthroat motherfucker, but I also understand that sometimes things happen. So if you applied before and it went to shit, I'm opening the door for you to go ahead and apply again. And for those of you who haven't yet, Two things I request, reply to all my emails within 24 hours and be fucking committed to becoming a girl magnet so you never get cheated on again. I don't want any of you guys to feel what I felt on that day when I heard Krista having sex with another dude. It still pains me. And that was like 25 years ago. That's how bad these things hurt. And I can relate to you if you two have been cheated on. Let's get you past it. I use NLP. When I think about it, it kind of messes me up. But on the other hand, I'm like, whatever, dude. Like, I'm so far past that. The girls I've gotten are so much harder than that. And the girl I have now is fucking eons ahead of anything Krista was. So who gives a shit? And I want to do the same thing for you. Let that shit go. It's in the past. Let's move forward like the fucking men we are. Gentlemen, I draw a podcast on Mondays and Thursdays. So please stay tuned for the next one. And that's right. I will see you in the next episode.